Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Open Source Days. You just saw our new demo reel. You'll see it again. You'll have an opportunity to see the work from all of our members that are using open source to, to do motion picture. Um, in this first segment of our day, I'm going to um, uh, my name is David Morin, I'm executive director of the Academy Software Foundation. And I want to start uh, this segment of the talk, uh, um, State of Our Foundation, at a very high level, personal level, actually. Uh, a few weeks ago, I uh, did a road trip with my son from Florida to Canada, and we stopped by Kitty Hawk in North Carolina, and uh, the birth of flight and the Wright brothers story. And it, has a, it had a strangely emotional effect on me. We all know the Wright brothers and the story 120 years ago, how they created, they, they succeeded in fly a, a motorized aircraft for the first time. And we all know the impact it had on all of us. Today we're flying all over the world as it's uh, not an issue. But seeing how the Wright brothers had uh, built their whole story, which is a story of perseverance and um, a story of uh, not letting go of this idea and of uncertainty uh, and of innovation, uh, resonates a lot to what we're doing in our industry here. And uh, I thought I would start at a higher level than usual uh, with something closer to home. This image, um, a bit of a perspective, it looks like a strange connected galaxy far, far away, but it represents the internet at 10.40 a.m. on December 20th, 1997, 26 years ago. So the image represents the network of networks that is the internet. It's color-coded by continents with the name of the top network uh, at the time. There's a beautiful animation uh, representing this uh, on the opti.org website that, that created this animation. I encourage you to go see it. If we have time later, uh, maybe I'll show it. In the interest of time, I'm just jumping to the last frame. So that is the internet um, on uh, September uh, 8, uh, 2020. It's now, at that time, a beautiful flower uh, that has blossomed. And by any measure, it's the largest engineering project ever taken by mankind. Uh, millions of people, thousands, tens of thousands of companies worked on laying, out, laying down the cables and the wireless network to make the internet possible. And uh, by most account, uh, open source software is running between 80 and 96 percent of the internet today, depending on who uh, and which study you look at. Um, the uh, jumping another layer uh, into, into this now, to the next level and closer to home. Uh, this year, a developer named Andre Katsha made a map of the 400,000 projects on GitHub, which mostly hosts open source software, um, and an estimated 94 million developers working on that software. The map is interactive, and you can see it at avanca.github, the map of GitHub. The map is divided in continents, um, of which there are many, um, and with names like Androidia and P Pythonia and AI Landia, all very whim whimsical. For our purpose, uh, we focus on the plus plus nation. This is where um, our stuff is, and um, it's the continent where our projects are. So we're getting closer to our state of the foundation. It's actually in the country called Sigrafica, there in the in the middle. And if you zoom closer, you start to resolve uh, projects that start to show up. And if you go zooming enough in some corner of Sigrafica, you can start seeing our project. I don't know if you see them here. When you click on them on the interactive version, it highlights all the links that the project have. And uh, I want to start uh, the, state, the proper state of the foundation uh, by talking about open image I.O., our latest project that joined the foundation. Um, Open Image I.O. now is led by Daniel Greenstein, and it just joined the academy. It's an image input and output API for reading and writing images files for nearly any format. It's widely used in the industry and was donated by his owner and creator, Larry Gritz. Welcome to the foundation, Open Image I.O., and thank you, Larry Gritz. Yes. Next project I want to mention, in no particular order, um, I'm going to go through a, a, a quick update on our projects. So, MaterialX, 
led by Jonathan Stone, MaterialX is an open standard for representing material and look dev content that allows platform independent exchange across application. Uh, it just welcomed the open PBR physically based surface shading model that was donated by Adobe and Autodesk. Thank you, Adobe Autodesk, for open PBR. <laughs> and MaterialX has had a virtual town hall that is recorded and will show on our website where they showed um, MaterialX in USD, in USD and Hydra, look dev done in Maya using MaterialX, the Strata MaterialX editor from IKEA. IKEA is here. Yes. Thank you. And the Quiltix graph editors and more, all recorded on our YouTube channel. Next, I want to talk about Open Color IO, led by Carol Payne, with longtime contribution by Chief Architect Doug Walker. Open Color IO is a complete color management system for media production with an emphasis on visual effects and animation. In their virtual town hall, they showed new OCIO integration with 3ds Max, After Effects, Anchor Point, Unreal Engine and these integration add up to a total of more than two dozen vendor software integration using Open Color I.O. Next, we're talking about Open Timeline I.O. So it's an open source API and interchange format for editorial timeline. It's led by Josh Miner. Open Timeline I.O. is shipping with Autodesk RV, Foundry, Foundry Nuke Studio and Hero, F-Track, Cinesync Play, Ahead I.O. Cezanne Studio, Cargo Cult Matchbox, a new this year, just announced, Blackmagic Design DaVinci Resolve 18.5, supporting Open Timeline I.O. Also, Adobe has started, stated that they are working on the support for Premiere Pro, and several other open source applications are using Open Timeline I.O., such as OpenRV, TL Render, Kden Live, and Blender. Blender is here in the room. Thank you, Blender, for your integration. Next. Um, I want to talk about the Open Review Initiative. This is a different type of project. This is a project umbrella that includes two projects within it. It's led by Eric Strauss, and it's aiming to produce a unified open source tool set for playback review and approval of motion pictures and related professional media. It contains OpenRV and XStudio, two uh, software that have been open source recently, OpenRV by Autodesk, uh, where Guillaume Brossard is doing an amazing job uh, explaining to us how it was made, and also uh, Ted Wayne from DNEG working on XStudio. Eric Strauss will give an update on the initiative later this morning at 11.50, and Ted Wayne uh, from DNEG will talk about the uh, multi-platform uh, aspect of XStudio at 5.10. Please come to see these presentations. Then next, OpenFX. OpenFX is led by Gary Oberbrunner. It's an open standard for 2D visual effects and co compositing plugins. It is used by most editing and effects systems worldwide in wide commercial use since it was developed in, in 2004. It's a project that joined the foundation recently. It has a new bright future with the Academy Software Foundation. Open Shading Language, led by Chris Kula. Open Shading Language was developed origi originally at Sony Picture Imageworks for, huge, for use with their Arnold Renderer. It is supported by Illumination 3D Light Renderer, Otoy Octane Renderer, V-Ray, Redshift, and the Cycles Renderer in Blender. At their virtual town hall last week, they hosted a presentation by Leica, Imageworks, and Intel with discussion by Larry Gritz, uh, who, are, who is planning the future roadmap for OSL, Check out the recording. Then OpenVDB. OpenVDB led by Ken Musset, who's the creator of VDB, DreamWorks Animation. The OpenVDB project is an open source library for the efficient storage and manipulation of volumetric data. And we had great news at SIGGRAPH. Ken has been awarded the um, Practitioner's Award from SIGGRAPH. Congratulations, Ken. Next is OpenEXR, led by Kerry Phillips. OpenEXR is a high dynamic range multi-channel raster file format, released as an open standard along with a set of software, software tools created by Industrial Light and Magic. Uh, it's one of the first projects to be open source in our industry. It's robust and widely used in the motion picture industry. Res, led by Stephen McKenzie. 
Res is a cross-platform package manager with a twist, used on more than 30 studios, by more than 30 studios in our industry. If you want to know about the twist, join the technical steering committee meeting of Res to find out, if you don't know already. Led by Brian Cipriano, OpenQ is a highly scalable render manager designed for the visual effects and animation industry that has been in use in a large number of motion pictures, most notably Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse. OpenQ knows how to render movies. OpenAsset.io, led by Tom Cowland. OpenAsset.io is an open source interop standard for tools and content management system used in media production. You may notice that it doesn't have a lot of connection on the graph yet. That is because OpenAsset.io is a great example of a project in sandbox phase that we have at the foundation to allow new idea, and that's how the foundry came to us with a new idea that the TAC thought it was worth exploring and developing until it reaches potentially the next stage of incubation. So we have high hopes for OpenAsset.io. Then there is the Digital Production Example Library, a project different from the others in that it doesn't deal with code as much as it deals with content. Led by Eric Anderton, the Digital Production Example Library, or DPL for, shop, for short, grew out of industry needs for production-grade sample content uh, to test hardware and software to ensure that it can scale the demands of the film and TV production. It is a problem for software vendors to develop their software to the level of use that they will find on real project if they don't have real project data to test against. So we, there is a great number, there's already a phase one level of numbers in DPL that people can go through. You see the list here. Please. Uh, for all of you who deal with content, either at studios or at, at vendors or at um, visual effects and animation studios, uh, please, uh, when you come across content that you think would be worth to have in our digital production example library, uh, signal us, uh, let Eric know, and we can help you work with the studios. There's a special license that we've designed just for them uh, so that they can uh, they feel comfortable uh, transferring uh, content to us, it's a, it's a license that is, uh, prevents the, com the, the commercial use in production and that states that the, the uh, content will be used for education and uh, for demo and, uh, and for uh, and academia only. And these are our projects. Thank you for uh, going through the list with me. Uh, we have uh, 14 of them and they are all grouped under the Technical Advisory Council. Um, this is where, this is the, the heart and mind of our foundation, where all the engineers go uh, and meet to uh, design what we're going to do next at the project level and for our foundation in general. You see our structure. We have a continuous integration platform, which is open source and also open for anyone to come in and draw from. And the governing board and the outreach committee are there purely to the service of the engineers and the projects to move the platform forward. A little bit of stats um, that we have in terms of growth since 2020. We have currently more than uh, 2,700 contributor, a growth of 77 persons since 2020, and um, 31,400 commits, uh, six, a 76% uh, increase since 2020. So our platform is dedicated to um, development of open source software, and we intend to grow it because we think that open source software, if it's 96% of the internet or 80% of the internet, in our industry, eventually, if we do a good job, it should also be 80% of the stack that uh, we use to make movies, for the good of movies. Now, for all this good talk about uh, helping each other and working in collaboration, um, Many of you, um, when they talk about open source, when you talk about open source in your company, I come across this, uh, uh, the, let's call them the money people, people who care about budgets, who care about um, what the, the, how much it costs. And uh, from, uh, from that class of people, the producers, the, uh, the, the, the COOs, 
uh, the concept of open source is always a little strange at first because it's difficult for them to put a value on it and why are we giving our stuff away and what's the benefit. Now, there is a model developed, um, and this is an um, information algorithm coming from the Linux Foundation. Uh, there is a model called the construction cost model where you can infer the value of an open source project by looking at the GitHub and the line of codes. We have run the Kokomo model on our projects, and without getting into all of the details of this slide here, uh, you see our project on the left and the estimated valuation of our project according to the Kokomo model on the right. So this is new data. We intend to use that, um, and I have to say that the Kokomo, the Kokomo model is, uh, is not perfect uh, in terms of an evaluation model. There is, in fact, a very active discussion at the tech level to say we need to adjust this, and we will uh, adjust the Kokomo model to better represent our, um, the developments in our industry. But that gives us an idea in terms of ballpark of the valuation of our project that comes at about $80 million today for the projects we have in the foundation. So the idea is when you talk to money people about doing open source or joining the foundation and they ask you, well, why would we do that? One of the reasons is that you're coming in to, uh, if you use these projects, you are actually buying into that level of development that's been done over the years. So you're, you're actually saving all that money because it's already been put in and the software is free to use. So that's one of the arguments that comes in, in um, particularly if you're considering, if your company is not already a member and considering joining. So next, um, I want to say a few words. Uh, first of all, about how do you interact with all the projects. So we have mailing lists, Slack channels, GitHub, and uh, meeting calendars that are all open on our website. Uh, the Slack channels are the place where everything uh, is is uh, happening, um, and you can join for any one of the projects. You can join a, a working group. Um, we have four of them, Continuous Integration, uh, Diversity and Inclusion, USD, and Rust. And uh, I want to uh, talk about a few of them. Um, the um, Continuous Integration Working Group is led by Jean-Francois Panisset, who oversees the development of our open source build platform and is closely aligned with the VES uh, the VFX reference platform. Our, our Rust working group is led by Scott Wilson, dedicated to create a foundation for uh, C and Rust bindings on C++ library used in m &E. um, I want to say a word about our USD working group, led by Alex Schwank and Nick Porcino. It's a very active uh, working group with sub five sub work groups on the topics listed here, and a Slack channel with more than 800 participants. And here I want to take a moment uh, to talk about uh, our commitment to help USD via our USD working group. Um, and our commitment is stronger than ever in context of the uh, announcement about the Alliance on Open USD that we all heard about. I'm not going to go in details on that. There's a panel that will go in all the details at 1.30 this afternoon, but our USD working group is going to go full speed ahead, continuing to look at the motion picture industry use of USD. Great work being done over there. And um, led by, yes, and our other um, working group, um, last of four, is the Diversity and Inclusion Working Group. So this Diversity and Inclusion Working Group has done am amazing work. Um, it has done, um, there is currently a summer learning program that is ongoing. They have produced a governing board succession plan to increase diversity at the level of our board. Uh, they have produced the behind the screen uh, profiles of engineers that we have on our website. Lots of, of things, including a newly announced community support uh, call for help uh, for accessibility and looking at accessibility within our open source project uh, for people with disability. And um, the, another, uh, another um, effort of the Diversity and Inclusion Working Group that we are announcing today is Dev Days 2023. Dev Days 2023 uh, is a, a program that we are going to uh, do in uh, October, around October 9 to 13, a 48 hours development event using a, our project. And so in order to, meet, uh, to make that event a success, we need your participation. If you're a developer interested in participating, let us know, and also the company we, you, you work for. Um, we've been uh, talking uh, extensively in our tech and our board over the last year about growing our contributors to ensure stability of our project. And also we believe that 
diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, should be ingrained in everything we do. So please join Dev Day's channel on the ASWF Slack. And uh, it's not just for engineers. There is a lot to do also in documentation and other aspects of our projects. So please have um, sponsor people to join Dev Days. So in other news, I see that I'm at zero here. Is that actually the case? Do I have a, a five more minutes? Three? OK. All right. So I'll, ble I'll breeze through that. Yes? I'll breeze through that. So um, I want to say a word about the new open source and open standard organization that have come in our industry in the last year. This is awesome. We really, uh, we were part uh, original founders of the Metaverse Standard Forum with Neil Trevet, who maybe is here, who is leading that project. They have now more than 2,500 um, companies in the Metaverse Standard Forum. It's awesome to chart the way of the Metaverse. And the new alliance on OpenUSD is also fantastic. When you find out this afternoon more details about what it set out to do, we are 100% behind the alliance. These new organizations really talk about the growth of the open source and open standard um, concepts in our industry. Uh, and at this level, we have, we're totally aligned with all the organization that's there and glad to participate in their activity. Um, yesterday, I don't know if you saw that, Ed Catmull was in the Wall Street Journal. So I thought, hey, Ed Catmull is sending us a signal. So Ed Catmull is releasing um, the, uh, the new, um, a new edition of his Creativity Inc. book, which is full of wisdom. And he has a few chapters that have been added. I think uh, one of the quote here about the new version um, is this one. You know, what we need is a mindset that allows us to adapt when nothing is stable. So I think that sort of observation talks a lot about our industry right now. There's a lot going on. And, um, in, in at many levels, I won't go into the details, but this thought and having um, the spirit of Ed Gatmull, you know, with us every day uh, and through his book is great to see. We need to adapt when nothing is stable. That said, John Murtick wrote a book. John Murtick, um, our director of program management. Did he make it yet? Here, yes, John, in the back. It's an amazing book. It's 100% on topic for everything we do. You have a list of the chapters here. We already have very good and deep discussions about uh, some of them at our uh, strategy meetings and things like that. Um, I hear that John uh, maybe has a few free copies with him, so you should go and see him and uh, talk with, talk, or, and uh, if, uh, if he runs out a copy, it's on Amazon.com. Highly recommended. Please uh, get the book. Now, another thing that we've done that is new, uh, we have done a beers of a feather, like the one we're going to have tonight at the end of this, in London earlier in June. And we want to do more of those uh, throughout the world, um, in the city, wherever your company is. So if you want to host a beers of a feather, let us know, contact Emily, and we are going to help you do that. Um, other news, we have lots of other news in on our website at this graph, more than I have time to talk about. Please check our uh, website, you will see them. It includes uh, uh, the, um, we already talked about OpenImage.io, we have new members, Bold Graphics, Core Weaves, and Otoy, thank you, new members, for joining us. And um, getting started with the USD Working Group, a great story there. And if it was not enough, we now have a swag store. So you can go uh, right here, and uh, we just opened it, so there's only a few things in it at the moment, but we're going to populate it with more, and you'll be able to get a t-shirt for your favorite project, and a cup, and um, a number of other things. So please get to uh, the, uh, score, the um, QR code over here. And in conclusion, I want to uh, show this. I show it every year. It's getting longer, our timeline. We started in 2018, and uh, we've done uh, five years. It's five years ago now that we've had uh, the foundation, and it's our fifth open source day today um, that, that we are having. Um, something to be proud of for all of you that have participated in making it happen. Our mission has not changed. Provide a neutral platform for open source software developers. Although we did run it through ChatGPT at our last meeting, and it came up with this version, Empowering Art, Engineers and Artists Unite Open Source Magic. I think it's for this morning. 
it's, it's catchier than the long paragraph. And so we're uh, going to continue with that. Um, membership, these are uh, the companies. Most of you are part of those, the companies that are helping us. This is how we fund the foundation. So uh, please uh, continue, um, and we, uh, we love you. It's really about people behind the companies that are part of our governing board representative. Thank you, governing board. And the alternates that are the, the wing person of the um, governing boards uh, that, uh, that are the next generation of our go governing board, if you want, that are there to help and, and take uh, the seat when the main board uh, member is not available. And the member of our TAC, the member of our TAC, the brain and the beating heart of our foundation. Uh, lots of passion there, lots of work done, lots of midnight hours done preparing all kinds of meetings and presentation and writing code. Thank you to them. And um, we have a great, um, this was the virtual, virtual town hall meetings for all our projects. I'll skip through that. This is the program today. You know what it is. It's awesome. Uh, there's birds of a feather all of tomorrow. Thank yous are... <laughs> Uh, to, uh, are needed for the, our team that have put together open source days. Um, Emily, Deb, John, Yaril, Annie, Molly, thank you. Our sponsor, Autodesk, Foundry, HP, Unreal Engine. Our program committee that put uh, all the presentation you're going to see, Aliza, Joe, Kelly, Karen, and Sean, thank you. And uh, you can join the discussion. Uh, you know where to find us. I am now happy uh, to introduce our real keynote speaker.